Good afternoon, morning, superstars, whichever it is. Want to welcome Miss Dang and Miss Fung's class as well, as we're going to go ahead and explore lesson 10.7, day one. We're going to be doing some operations in scientific notation. Now, we are going to split it up into two days. Today, we're only going to look at multiplying and dividing. So the good news is, if you have some basic skills on your multiplication and division, then you can do this. We are still going to remember some of our exponent rules from earlier in chapter 10 to try and help us be successful. One thing we do want to remind you, though, is when you are finalizing your answer, your answer needs to truly be in scientific notation. So after you do your operation, it might not be in scientific notation yet. So you got to do that one extra little step. All right, so let's go ahead and identify a few examples that we're going to be doing together. Simplify, right answer in scientific notation. So the first thing you need to know is it is a multiplication problem. You've got a set of parentheses, another set of parentheses, quantity multiplied by another quantity. So again, we're just going to go ahead and multiply our basic numbers together. And those are the numbers in the front, essentially like our coefficients. So I'm going to go ahead and ask us to multiply 6.5 by 8.7. Now, if you have a calculator available, this will definitely make it a lot easier. If we choose not to let you use a calculator on the assessment, it'll be because the numbers are a lot easier to work with, maybe like 4 times 5.2, something like that. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and multiply 6.5 by 8.7. You do the same thing on your calculator, and you would notice that you get a 50-something. So that's what we're going to write down first, is a 56.55. So essentially, that's what I just did right there, is I took those numbers at the beginning, and I multiplied them, and I got a 56.55. So you would write that here. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to notice that the tens have the exact same base. And if you remember, we, at the beginning of chapter 10, tried to learn if we are going to add, multiply, or subtract our exponents. The little hint I use for my students, again, is if the exponents are inside, outside, that's when we multiply them together. But for this one, the exponent is inside, and the other one is also inside. So that rule is going to ask us to add our exponents. Notice how it still stays times 10 to the exponent, which means I do not multiply the tens to get 100. Scientific notation still has the same base of 10. All right, so now I have a 56.55, which is not okay for a scientific notation answer. We'll change that in a moment. But our exponent is now a negative third power. Now remember, we are going to go ahead and say that this is considered like a small number. So one way you could do it, if you have a little trouble on trying to figure out which uh, way we're going to actually change our exponent, is you can take the 56.55 and you can move your decimal place three times, and you would now have a small number starting with 0 point something. That is your standard notation, and then you can change that back into scientific notation. Because some students have difficulty with this next part, so that would be method one. This one is a little bit more preferred, where yes, 56.55 is too much of a number, because remember, we want it between 1 and almost 10. So i got to move my decimal one place. Now, the difficult part for some students now is trying to figure out, well, am I going to add a 1 or am I going to subtract a 1? I like to think it about it again. Well, that number was greater than 10, because remember, it has to be almost 10. So it's a bigger number. So that's going to be essentially like adding 1. Some people who tried doing the memorization, moving it to the left is like adding 1. So to finalize our answer, the correct form is going to be the 5.655, and our new exponent is now going to be a negative 2. Now, if you don't have to do any changes here like we did on this example, the problem is much easier to work with. But sometimes, after we multiply, like even if it's a 3 times 4, 3 times 4 is going to be a 12, and 12 is too great for our scientific notation answer. So we've got to do a little bit of change at the end. 
All right, let's try another multiplication one. For this one, if you notice, we're going to go ahead and group it again. Some students just think about it. Some students rewrite the grouping. That one is a lot easier to multiply. So in other words, that would be a great assessment problem, meaning you would not necessarily have to use a calculator for that one. So I'm going to ask you to go ahead and multiply that real quick, maybe just on the side of your paper in the margin. And then if you remember, the idea with your exponents, they have the same base. Our exponents are going to add together. They are both inside the parentheses. We're going to add them, negative 6 plus 12. All right, if you notice, when you multiplied, it is a little bit too big. 11.5 is greater than we want. We want it between 1 and almost 10. Our new exponent is a positive 6. Since that is not an acceptable answer, we're going to go ahead and change our decimal. We're going to move it one space again. And then you got to figure out, okay, we moved it one space. Is that going to be adding one or subtracting one? I like saying the number is bigger than we want. It's greater than what it should be. So that is adding one because a positive one is greater than a negative one. Some people like to memorize it's moving to the left. That is adding one. So we now have that wonderful answer of 1.15 times 10 to the seventh power. Notice how it stays a base of 10 all the way through. So those are two quick examples dealing with the multiplication. So we just multiplied our two numbers. We added our exponents. But then at the very end, had to change it up to make sure it was good to go. Now, our next two examples are going to quickly be division problems. If you notice, you have a fraction line, which right away, right away tells you that you need to divide. Now, again, on an assessment, you wouldn't have those decimal numbers as difficult as they appear. It might just be a simple like 5 divided by 2. So we're going to go ahead and regroup it again, where we're going to talk about the division for our decimals. So that's really what I'm going to type into my calculator. So I'm going to do that right now, 2.3958. And I'm going to divide it by 1.98, which means it's dividing by almost a 2. With my exponents, since they are set up as a division problem, remember, we are going to do a subtraction of exponents. Normally, we would do our subtraction at the denominator because that's where the greatest exponent is. But because we're just doing scientific notation and negative exponents are allowed in scientific notation, we would just go ahead and write 3 subtract 8. All right, according to my calculator, when I did my division, I have 1.21. And then my new exponent is negative 5. Now, on this one, if you notice my uh, value in the front, 1.21, that is an acceptable value because it's between 1 and almost 10. Remember, 9.9999 essentially is the limit. Anything greater than that, like a 10 or 11, 22, whatever, it's not going to work. But a 1.21, that's wonderful. We don't have to do any changing. So those are the problems that we were liking to see. It is good as is. No change required. All right, one more quick example, and then we'll actually look at some homework problems real quick before you leave for the day. All right, for this one here, give you a moment to write it down. Now, one thing that some superstar students recognize is... 1.305 and 1.45, which means your denominator is the greater number. So that when you do your division, and you even just type it in, now remember, you're not guaranteed a calculator for your assessment. So when you actually have to do your division on the side of your paper, notice what's going on. 1.305 divided by 1.45. Ah, when I divide it, I get a 0 0.9, which means that is going to be a little bit too small. Again, with a division problem, we actually go ahead and subtract our 
exponents. So 3 subtract a negative 4 really becomes adding the opposite, like from 7th grade. So now I currently have a 0 0.9 times 10 to the 7th power. Now remember, anything starting with 0 point, it's not acceptable for scientific notation. So that means we need to actually end up moving our decimal. So I'm going to go ahead and move it one space. Now remember, you can try the memorization, or you can say, you know what? 0 0.9 was a number that was less than, less than what we wanted, because we wanted between 1 and almost 10. So am I going to add a 1 or subtract a 1? What do you guys think? Yeah, we're going to subtract a 1 because the number was too small. Some people like the memorization. Regardless, you get a nice exponent of 6. Now, you could put 9.0 instead of just a 9, and that might be a little bit better for some people. But again, the key thing is getting the correct exponent. Because what we've actually seen before is students who do the decimal movement like this, so they know it's going to be a 9, but they don't change the exponent, meaning they keep it as an exponent of 7. So their incorrect answer would be 9 times 10 to the 7th power. So anytime you move your exponent, your Sorry, anytime you move your decimal, the exponent also has to change. So be very careful there. All right, going to go ahead and ask our superstar stubs to, subs to go ahead and pause the video and pass out the worksheet. All right, welcome back. Let's go ahead and try some homework problems real quick. <clears throat> if you notice, it's broken up into categories, if you will. You've got some multiplication problems here. You've got some division problems here. And then you actually have some word problems. And that's where a little bit difficulty does occur of students trying to figure out, you know what, am I actually going to multiply or divide? So really quick, looking at number 22. Ooh, maybe you've been to Central Park. It's pretty cool. It's rectangular and measures approximately if one acre is equal to, you know what, this is a two-step problem because you got to find the area first. That means you have to multiply those first numbers. So let's write multiply. Then to actually figure out how many acres is dividing. So you're going to take your total area, which is found from this part here. Then you're going to go ahead and divide by that equivalent equal part. Now, how many acres? It's going to actually most likely ask you for a standard notation answer there as opposed to a scientific notation. But all the numbers are too big for us to really use standard notation, so that's why we use a scientific notation. So again, when you get to these problems here, you got to figure out, you know what, what is it going to be? For example, like this one, 22 trillion and 327 million, you actually need to change those into scientific notation first. So you got to figure out, okay, how many zeros do you need for a million? So that would be 327 million like that, 22 trillion, that's going to be 22, and then we've got, that's 22,000, million, billion, trillion. Whew, that's a lot of money. That's the debt. All right, so if it says, if it's population, uh, how much does each citizen owe? Ooh, that's gross. Let's see if it'll move for us. Yeah. So it really turns into a division problem. Looking something like that. But instead of setting it up like that, we're asking you to change it into scientific notation and practice that skill. Because again, a bunch of you can just go ahead and do some basic division like your elementary teacher taught you. That's not exactly how we want it. We want scientific notation, which is really what you're doing on the front side here. So let's focus on a few problems, just like we did on our notes, give you a little bit of homework help. All right, let's look at number three. Number three is a nice, easy one. 
So most students would just look at it and say, okay, 1.2 multiplied by 1.2, which is essentially 12 times 12, which is a 144. But it's not really 144. If you need to, that would be a simple one that you can do on your side paper for your assessment, and it actually comes out to 1.44 times 10. And then our exponents again is going to be a negative 2 plus a 3. So we would have a 1.44 times 10 first power. Now notice the 1.44, that is an acceptable number to have for a scientific notation answer. So it means you don't have to do any decimal movement, which means you do not have to change your exponents either. All right, let's try one more. Let's see, one that we will definitely have to change. All right, let's look at number eight. Number eight, not too challenging either. If you needed to, you would go off to the sign and you would multiply by nine. We would then put our decimal back. All right, gonna give you a moment to go ahead and do that multiplication, please. So 9 times 8 is 72. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 7 is 16. 9 times 4 is 36, plus 1 is 37. So I would write it as 3, 7, 6, 2. But again, two decimal places, so from the back, two decimal places there. So 37.62 times 10. We're going to go ahead and add, so negative 4 plus negative 5. So I have 37.62 times 10 to the negative ninth power. But as you notice, unlike number 3, number 3 was an acceptable answer because that front number, our C value, is between 1 and almost 10. But on this one, it is not acceptable. So if you want to use a second color to show that you are going to move your decimal one place here, which will now give me a 3.762, which is an acceptable answer. But you got to decide, are you going to add one or subtract one? The way I like to think about it again is 37 is greater than what we need. So positive one or plus one is greater than a subtract one. So a negative, plus, negative nine plus one is a negative eight. So again, we just did two multiplication problems. The first one, you did not have to change this answer. It was acceptable. This one, after multiplication, we did have to change our answer. Oh, you know what? Lights. Some of you probably just caught my mistake, or maybe even earlier, I just recognized it. Come on, Mr. Murillo. There we go, times 10 to the negative eighth power. There we go, that's better. All right, let's go ahead and do two division problems now. Division problems again tells us that we are just gonna go ahead and divide our basic numbers. So if you notice number 12, that's a really great easy assessment problem because most students can actually just divide that in their head really quick. Eight divided or 8.04 divided by two in your head. If not, bring it over to the side. Again, no shame, just do what you gotta do and divide it out. So if I divide it, it gives me a 4.02 times 10, and then again, we're gonna go ahead and actually subtract our exponents. It's a division problem, but we're using our quotient rule to subtract. 4.02 times 10 to the third power. Again, that is an acceptable answer, so I do not have to change anything. 4.02 is between one and almost 10. I know I keep saying that over and over again, but you should be surprised how many students forget that piece of information for scientific notation. All right, let's see. Number 11 looks pretty good. Ah, let's do number 15. 
All right, for number 15, that one, division in our head, probably not the greatest. So if you have to, you would set it up as 3.24 goes in. And the 8, you really don't need 8.0, so just 8 is acceptable. So again, you can do that if you had a calculator available. And you just type it in. That would give us a 0 0.405 times 10. Again, right here, we're going to go ahead and write it as negative 4, subtract negative 7 for our exponents. I am going to show adding the opposite using a second color. Let me zoom in for our vision challenged friends. which shows me 0 0.405 times 10. And again, negative 4 plus 7 is a 3 for the exponent. But as you notice, the answer is unacceptable. 0 0.405 is not in scientific notation. So let's move our decimal one place, which is now going to be a 4.05 times 10. So remember, if you move your decimal, your exponent's got to change. So the question is, and this is the challenge part for some students, are you going to add one or are you going to subtract one? What do you guys think? Add one or subtract one? The zero point is less than what we want and negative one is less than positive one. So we're definitely going to subtract one. So we now have an exponent of two. Excellent. So we've done some problems to try and get you started. Uh, refresh your memory on the exponent rules, especially the quotient rule. We talked about our word problems. You got to figure out, are you going to multiply or divide first? Use those keywords. Maybe look for those awesome keywords to do some annotation like underlining, circling, highlighting. Then once you know what the operation is, then just go ahead and either multiply or divide. All right, you guys got this. Do the best that you can, please. Thank you for being amazing students.